Right, Hazel, good to see you. Good to see you too. How are you doing? Uh, well, you know, as good as you possibly can be within a global pandemic. I'm alive and well, and within the present context, I'm very happy because you have, and here I have my old uh, dry climb jacket, which, as I was saying just before we started, is a sort of rich vintage aroma after the four hour run I went uh, in it this weekend. But the dry climb is one of my absolute all time favorite jackets. I mean, like I say, I've run in it throughout pretty much all sort of through autumn through to spring. In summer, I tend to clip it to the back of my harness as like a sort of really super light, uh, windproof and, you know, in lightly insulated shell. And I can't think of many other products I use all year round for multiple different sports and disciplines. Uh, and it's amazing. And so no pressure, but here we have the uh, dry climb uh, and it's the dry climb ether 2.0. Tell me more. Okay, so as you've just basically put into a little snapshot, our dry climb series <coughs> has been super popular for a really long time. Um, I've also got an old dry climb jacket that I was going to bring in, but I was like, yeah, maybe not. <laughs> It's quite faded. It's had well, you know, it's really well used. So we've reworked it because as much as it's a brilliant piece, it's getting a little bit dated. So old fabric, quite shiny on the front. New fabric, matte. Also stretch. Ah, because it is, because I mean, the, the thing with the absence of stretch within its predecessor, it, it never felt like too much of a problem because the cut was so good. <laughs> However, that doesn't mean that the presence of stretch is a bad thing within the new version. So we've added stretch to that face fabric. It's now a matte finish rather than that shiny finish that people will have been used to previously. But it's also 100% recycled, which is pretty great. So obviously, lots of fabrics these days are moving more and more into the recycled environment, and we need to go there. We need to look after the planet that we love to play in. So it's recycled using a fabric from a company called Econil, and it uses recycled fishing nets, not completely, but partially. And we thought that was a really great program and the fabric that they make is really great and it improves the jacket, it makes it better. Awesome. So the, it's the same dry climb fabric that you've seen for many years, um, which is great because it's got that little bit of a pile to it. So it wicks really well, it breathes really well. It weighs almost nothing that keeps you warm it's just brilliant fabric to use. Another thing you'll notice we've changed is the underarm vents. I was, and I was gonna say actually, cause um, that, that shocked me when I saw those, not least because as I said, the problem with a classic product is that change makes fans of that product nervous like me. But tell me more, cause with the predecessor, you had a sort of mesh on the outside, whereas this yeah. has on mesh. And you're not going to be able to see this, but hopefully we'll be able to matched. pick up an image. It has mesh on the inside. Yeah. So the thinking behind that is that this is a jacket is designed to be windproof. And then we put mesh vents under the arm. Great, because actually it's something you're probably going to get quite warm in. But if you're not working really hard, that lets the wind in. So actually can be really quite chilling. I know I've certainly had some days out where the wind's just been a bit harsh and I've paused and it's like, do you know what, actually, I need another layer because that's letting in too much wind. Whereas now you've got the full shell fabric under the arm, so it keeps that wind out, but we still wanted to give some ventilation under the arms where you're gonna get really hot. So we put that mesh on the inside. <clears throat> We've also color matched it. Previously, it was always gray. Whatever color your jacket was, the mesh was gray. So we've color matched it. So it's looks better, it looks more modern, it brings it into the current time and is much more functional. So it will keep more wind out, but won't let you overheat because you've still got that ventilation in there. So it should be I mean, functional, if not more functional than its predecessor. They're still a very breathable jacket as yeah. is, aren't they, I think? I mean, like, I've, you know, whilst I've definitely like I say, this weekend's run was probably a good example of this because um, whilst these are going to be published in March, you know, this run took place during those crazy snow days of February and it was about minus seven with a whole bunch of wind chill, you know, kicking through with that big easterly. 
And yeah, like you say, um, having a vent is great in maybe that spring summer environment, but as there's a 40 to 50 mile an hour easterly uh, being projected right up underneath your arms. Um, well, you're not thankful of that. It's, yeah, I mean, I, maybe it speaks volumes, uh, Hazel, that I wasn't going that quickly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why it was four hours is because I was so slow. It's not a reflection <laughs> on the distance traveled. But um, the other thing as well is around the hood and the collar as well. So the hood in this is uh, you can stow away. Yeah, so <clears throat> with the hood, it's not insulated. It's just a windproof layer. So, you know, you're out for your run. <clears throat> it's a bit breezy. You've got to the top of your climb. You just need a little bit of something. <clears throat> Pull that out, stick it on, keep that wind out, keep your neck warm. It's a great little functional piece. But you've got it wearing at the moment with the hood zipped away into the collar. And I don't think that's a hindrance. It doesn't make this jacket feel like it's really bulky around the neck. So it's still really comfortable. We were, I was chatting about uh, hoods with Dan Bailey. This is like such a geeky UKC, UKH conversation, but with Dan Bailey, because what we were saying is the dilemma a lot of brands have for say midweight or lighter weight pieces such as this is that, well, what sort of hood do you put on anyway? Because actually, if you put like a helmet compatible hood on this, it'd be massive for yeah. the jacket that it is. And so, Basically, it's like, do you want a hood? Do you not want a hood? And the gist of what we said is, well, you kind of want an option of both, but then it's really difficult to get a sort of like one thing that does everything. But within this, you've got the option of stowing it away. You've got the option of having that lightweight windproof hood, which I say I used at the weekend. And maybe if things got chilly whilst, and again, I think of those crazy days when we could just go climbing outside and, you know, sort of like mountainous environments, but you know, like- See our friends. Maybe, yeah, yeah, all of those things, madness. <laughs> but you could then put the hood on under your helmet if, for instance, yeah. it was a particularly cold day and that isn't going to be a problem. Um, yeah, and so that's the, the idea, is that this hood is functional and it would just fit under your helmet and it's really compact. But we didn't want it to hinder the jacket as a jacket. Yeah. The other thing as well, which I'm really glad you've kept on the inside as well, is the reversible pocket that... It's just something that so many brands seem to either forget about, but I've used this, you know, stuff my jacket inside uh, this and popped it on the back of my harness so many times and it just saves so much hassle. Yeah, and it's got a really nice long hang loop on it as well so that it's really easy to clip. Um, and I'm really pleased that they kept that feature. Um, <clears throat> again, like you, it's something I do all the time. Get to the crag, clip it on, do my route, get to the top, mm, need a layer. It's always going to be a dry climb. So, uh, are the drawbacks then, Hazel? Uh, tell me, tell me what's wrong with this product. <laughs> um, some people might not like the colour. Uh, now, I must admit, I request, specially requested the brightest colour that you've got. I mean, bear in mind that this was its probably uh, the green screen's fading this jacket out. This, <laughs> this jacket actually is so bright that the green screen. So. Um, <laughs> My, my fluorescent yellow um, predecessor would take some beating, but this is a really cool colour. And there are, yeah. I believe, more conservative options available for those who don't necessarily wish to be. There are. So you can see the blue one is above my shoulder. Um, so for those that don't want red sun, which is the colour you're wearing, um, which again on the screen, it'll depend on people's computers. Sometimes it comes up orange and sometimes it comes up quite red, but it's a sort of blend of both. It is a red with a hint of orange. I, I like it but then i'm not necessarily a reliable source for that information however i will yeah. happily review this and um pass comment on a range of other things as soon as well we're allowed outside again but yeah. um yeah i'm very excited about this i say it's it's such Good. a versatile product that has been kind of lifted as a result of a bit of stretch the fact that it's got a bit of you know sustainability story attached to it and also the fact that i'm now excited about the um the the pits actually no longer having that mesh finish um, yeah. so yeah it, it's great i'm really looking forward to giving it a go good i'm pleased you like it brilliant thanks ever so much hazel speak to you you're soon. welcome <laughs>